Hi, welcome to Guitar Time. I'm Robert Knoll. This lesson's about type two bar chords. So if I was to, let's say, take an A minor chord and use different fingers, same pattern, open, three, four, one, I have my minor and I brought that those fingers up one fret, I would have my B flat minor chord, bar chord. Of course, moving that B minor, C minor, D minor. Also, if I had an A chord, and I had, let's say, open uh, A, second finger A, third finger A, fourth finger C, and I brought those fingers up one fret and added my first finger, I would have a major chord, you know? So I would have those major, those movable patterns. So coming from open into the bar chord, so it's, it's kind of cool if you see how the open chord can become a bar chord. In this case, the A minor and the A major chord. Okay, so let's go to the key of D. D for our, our bar chord, type 2. Type 2 means the root is on the fifth string or the A string. So a D bar chord, I would have a D first finger... My third finger would bar the seventh fret. So my D on the fifth fret, I've got my third finger barred so that I get the fifth, I get another root, and I get a major third. These are just the middle four strings. The D major chord, bar chord, is just four notes. You can see that, right? Root, three, three, three. And my finger placement, I'm trying to get everything next to the fret. Make my third finger right up next to the fret. So I could bar, if I barred all, all four strings, I would get what would be called a D6. I could add my baby finger up here and get a D7 version. That's kind of a nice chord to note. And that's all coming from this D bar chord. If I put my fourth finger on the B string, on the G note, I get the suspended chord, type 2. So here's that D, suspended. It's really cool. So if I take this bar chord and I bring my third finger up where it is on the fourth string, seventh fret, and I put my fourth finger below that, and then I put my second finger down, and I've got my bar for the fifth string and first string, I come up with a minor chord. So this would be, we would talk about intervals. Root, perfect fifth, root, now a minor third. And then we have another root. So if I took that third and I raise it up, then I, I bring the bar in, that gives me the major chord. If I take the bar off, put the second finger down, and the fourth finger, I get the minor chord, and it sounds nice to strum the middle four strings, but we can also have that A on the top, which is a fifth. And you should know that some people like that really thick D minor chord. We could bar all six strings, and we'd have a fifth on the top, bottom and on the top, and give us this big fat D minor chord. Okay, And that could be the same for the major chord. If I have a D bar chord like this and I want a fat, a big sounding D major chord, I would bar the sixth string, so I've got an A down there, which is a perfect fifth, and I get this big D chord. So you got the common four note D chord and then the big fat one. A lot of difference there, really. So back to that minor chord. Here's our D minor. Okay, well, let's say I take that the minor third, and uh, if I was to take that off, this would change to a major second or a nine. So I could call this a D minor nine without the second figure. Okay, so I got the minor third back. If I was to add the fourth, the D minor chord, take off the baby finger, we have the dominant seven, which makes us a D minor seven. 
Now, just so you know, there's another seven that happens to be a, a G note, C note right here. And if I take that C note and I add it up here, add one with my fourth finger, I've got the double seven, the added seven. D minor seven, D minor added seven. Once again, that seven can come down to that funky chord, the D6, major six. Sounds like so uh, that added seven's nice, and you've got a six next to it, and we take off the second finger, and we get the nine. Uh, the baby finger up here suspended. See my baby finger? Takes that off, second finger, minor seven, minor nine, added nine with a fourth. Okay, so there's a lot of varieties, a lot of types of chords. I'm using my form five D minor scale to see my intervals. So if you've got your form five minor scale, you should be able to analyze those chords. That's the importance of, of scales again, right? Okay, so these are movable chords. If, if I move these chords, the root note down to C, I would have a C minor, and of course a B minor. Remember, we started with the A minor. Or they would be major chords. Movable, right? When we get to the E position, that in this position, we can have the open E in there if we want. And it really adds a lot of fullness to any, whether it's minor or major. Now here's my major chord, and once again, I'm adding that baby finger for the suspended. The baby finger, if it's barred, adds a seven. And I could just have the, the baby finger without the fourth there, and that's an E7. E6. Also, you should know that if I did this, if I had my root, my third finger, and my baby finger coming in on the B string, in this case on the ninth fret, I would get an E7. It's a very popular E7. But here in E, I can have that low E in. I could bar it, and I get the fifth, the fat five on the bottom. So E7. Raise it. So this is your third, your major third. If you're raising the third, you're getting the fourth. Okay. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is your seven. So if you're one of my students or one of my subscribers uh, to lessons with me, you will have a PDF sheet that will show you these chord diagrams, okay, that you can work from. But sometimes it's good to hear the chords as I just did and, and uh, go through them and kind of show you. So type two chords are chords that have the root, we're saying, on the fifth string rooted. So if I'm in a situation where I'm playing with someone, I could say, well, I want an A chord type two. Well, that would probably signify that you would know to go to the 12th fret to give me an A. If I wanted a type one, it would be on the fifth fret, right? If I wanted a type two C minor chord, what well, would be here on the third fret? Well, I could also do one way up here on the 15th fret. And then I know I have a type one. So type one and type two, are there type three? Yeah, we'll go over those in another video. So learn your bar chords. They're really great to know. They open up uh, a lot of different sounds with strumming chords. And if you know your scales and arpeggios, you'll be able to analyze them.